real success stories told by the people who live them. We're going to have some guests on this show that everybody knows, and we're going to have guests on this show that nobody knows yet. One by one, Nick Heider is adding hits to the hit streak. Blessings, folks. Welcome back to another episode of The Hit Streak. I'm your man, Nick Heider, and I've got an extra special guest for you in the Hit Lab with me today. I've got none other than celebrity stylist and owner of the Catch Salon and Spa right here in Spring Hill, Tennessee, Miss Andrea Harbison. Andrea, it is an absolute pleasure to have you in the building with me today. Thank you so much. It's such an honor to be here today with you and be able to talk and talk about the business and everything so i'm excited well we do have much to discuss yes that we do (laughs) awesome um so i mentioned uh celebrity stylist you actually have uh have had a solid career on the in the land of television you were um involved with the real housewives of orange county yes yes all right so what does that mean you were involved with the show it means a lot of things um for one um well i was featured on the show um funny enough how it actually happened was i was actually doing uh two of the girls hair for about two years um this was right like two years before the pandemic and um they actually found me on instagram funny enough uh one of my (laughs) one of my friends i was in um san diego doing a hair show there and uh i was uh we were posting things on instagram and stuff and then she was actually working on the show as like um what do they call that like when the scriber and so one of the girls had seen uh, me on the Instagram and reached out to her and said, hey, um, can this girl come and do my hair? And I was like, oh, absolutely. <laughs> so then I show up at Emily's house from the Real Housewives of OC. And then Gina's there, too. So n- both of them are new to the show. So the show had not aired yet. It was before before everything, before anybody knew who they were. So and they were like, OK, we want we want this transformation because um, we're new to the show. We're just like ordinary people like they are. Mm. Um, and so it kind of all stemmed from that first of us meeting and me coloring and putting extensions. Another thing about me is I own my own brand of extensions. So, uh, so therefore they wanted me to, um, start doing extensions with them. So that sort of led to me going out there every six weeks, four to six weeks. And then when I started with them on the show, I was what, they call the glam squad Mm. so glam squad means like when they're in the confessionals on the tv show and uh they ask them all the questions and things like that and they're it's just them right so i was in the room with them doing the hair and helping with makeup and stuff and so yeah that's kind of how it became to be and we actually how i ended up on the show was um it was a night before confessionals and gina's like I kind of want to look like um, how Erica Jane has her hair from the Beverly Hills series, right? Okay. And I'm like, okay, well, it's eight. <laughs> and um, yeah, that's a whole that's a whole process. So I was up to like four in the morning coloring her hair platinum blonde because that's what she wanted to do. Mm. She is the client, right? I'm a, that's right. I do it. So, and then we get to set and everybody's freaking out. They're like, you changed your hair color. What, why did you change it? Like, she was, I guess, supposed to ask permission. Uh, it's, like, it's like an HOA, right? <laughs> she's, she's like, well, we haven't started the confessionals yet, so what's the problem? And they're like, because we've already started filming other parts. So because what they'll do is they'll film, and then they sometimes take stuff from the end and put yeah. it in the beginning. And you know how it goes when they piece it together. So they had to film me, like, mock doing her hair that time. Um, they gave me, like, an hour to slap some fake color, or, like, we just put toner on, mm. and dry it and reveal it because that's television, right? That's so right. we had already colored the hair. And I'm like, oh, my goodness. <laughs> so that's how I ended up on the show. That's awesome. Yeah. So um, kind of where we're going today is... So you're obviously a very very skilled at that part of it. Yeah. But like you're you're you got a salon and spa that's kicking ass. Yeah, for right sure. here in Tennessee, right? So yeah. you're running the business and that's there's a whole other side of that which is fantastic, but like let's let's take everybody back just a little bit, all right? So okay. um, you grew up in small town Indiana. Yep. And you ended up 
where had you just said yes exactly that's, that's a long journey so it's let's long. let's let's explain that what that what that journey looked like yeah it's funny because when i was younger i really didn't know what i wanted to do so i actually went into school to do business um business marketing um at a university in southern indiana and then i was like you know what this just isn't for me i i i mean i like the business aspect of it but i i need to be creative i need to do something else so I uh, was like, you know what? I think I, I think I want to do hair. Like I, I, I just came out of nowhere, you know. Sure. So um, I told my dad that I wanted to do hair, and he was like, "You're gonna end up being a greeter at Walmart." <laughs> oh. <laughs> and I was like, "Well, that's rude." <laughs> <laughs> so somehow it ended up. I, I moved to Indianapolis. I went to hair school, and then right out of hair school, I moved to Tennessee, knowing no one, nothing. And I just started fresh, and mm. this is where I wanted to be. So um, moved to Nashville in 2010, right? 2010. So funny enough, um, the day that I moved to Nashville was the day of the flood. Wow. Uh, yeah. So I was no. like, drive. I moved. Uh, I had an apartment in Murfreesboro, and uh, we we're like driving down 24, and I'm freaking out because I'm like, you know, 21 at the time, and uh, like, yeah, those buildings floating your yeah, way. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Road. We're like the the water was literally coming up like uh, over the tires down 24. I'm like something ain't right. I don't, I don't know. Is it always do this here? Is this I'm new? I I don't know. So so I moved here that day and I was like, okay, this is either a sign that this was a bad thing or mm. you know or it turned out all right. So yeah, so inter- I have interesting stories with all all the things that I do. No kidding, no kidding. Well, first of all, let me give a little disclaimer. I don't know how it is in Indiana, but here in in Tennessee, the the greeters at Walmart make like a million dollars. Oh, okay. No, I'm just uh, shoot, I missed out. The- <laughs> but if they, hey, look, if you're not where you want to be, this just goes to show I'm like, you. You know, well, and that's the thing. I'm like, you know, they kind of got they got like a stool. They get to sit. You know, I'm social. I could totally pull that gig for Bel- sure. Believe it or not, my father in law in his retirement was bored and did that for a while just because he loves hanging out and talking to people. Yeah. And he loved it. He absolutely loved it. You know, honestly, it's a really good, um, if if I were to put, um, say, a salon somewhere, it would probably be inside Walmart. I'd just be walking around. I'm like, you there, your mm. hair, come here. Like, let's mm-hmm. go. <laughs> let's oh, yeah. fix that real quick because if there's any kind of bad hair, I usually see it at Walmart. But yeah. I, I love me some Walmart, so I'm not hating on it. I love me <laughs> That's right. <laughs> so yeah, so no interesting stories, but um, but no, I love I love what I do. So I was really passionate about it, and um, I just set out on a goal. And then uh, in 2011, I opened up like in a solo salon. So those are like little oh, yeah. independent. So I started there. Um, I was there for like two years, and then that was in 2011. That was in 2011. Okay. Yeah. And so and then uh, in 2013. I rented a, a big office space um, in Cool Springs that was like a bottom of uh, t- like a, almost like a town type cheap. of thing. Yeah. So uh, and then I had booth renters that rented from me um, for years. And then, um, yeah, so it kind of led up to where I am now, where, you know, pandemic happened, you know, things things were different. Um and, you know, I set out and I said, you know, I really just want to I want I was ready to leave this location because I was getting super, super busy mm-hmm. and the location just was not um, really accommodating to the amount of people and the sort right. of uh, level of service that I wanted to offer. I couldn't bring in new things because there wasn't enough room. So um, mm. I asked the realtor, I said, uh, let's let's look at some places. Let me see if this is a, this is a like a thing that I could do. And so we go look at this place, and um, there were three three places on the list that we were set out to look at. So and it happened to be the two were right next to each other. So it was either this one or that one, you know. And so we walk in. It's disgusting. Like <laughs> that had been vacant for like four years. It'd been on the market for like three. How has this been on the market for three hundred days? Like this is yeah. crazy. So we walk in, and I was like, uh, I'm like, it, I mean, uh, they had like um, uh, seven rooms. And uh, the, you know, the uh, walls were like green and I was like, okay. And then I was like, you know what? I'll take it. I just, I, and then my realtor is like, and the realtor uh, I've known. So he was like, you know what? Maybe you should think about it. And this and that. Are you, are you sure? We haven't even looked at the other. I was like. So the guy that gets paid is telling me, hey, whoa. Well, and his, uh, his wife, like, um, she's like. If Andrea says she wants it, she wants it. Like that's a, I'm a very matter of fact person. I like, this is why I don't go on to car lots. You know what I mean? Cause I'll be like that one, 
You yeah. know, I, I it's how I ended up with my puppies. You know, somebody brings a puppy into the shop and I was like, well, shit, now I got a dog. Mm. You know, I'm just like very matter of fact. And so I think in business, you sort of have to have that because if you have too many like questions or like uncertainties, sometimes it can lead to like, I don't know, but for me, I'm like, is it this or it's that? It's that. You know what I mean? Mm. I'm very just matter of fact about things. So <laughs> I don't want to say I told you so, folks, but I told you so. <laughs> this is going to be a good one. It's going to be a good. One. So, um, how did you, so how did you pick Nashville out of from from Indiana? I know it's not far, right? So, but like, how did out of all the places you could end it up? Yeah, well, to do uh, hair. I, you know, I I definitely. Um, took like the options right so Chicago was like one thing I was like you know I could move to Chicago but it's cold so I don't really want to do that and then I was like I love Nashville and this was before Nashville was is what it is today you know and then uh California was another option I was actually gonna move to San Diego um at the time just because we were in a recession at that point um you know kind of coming out of the recession and uh, my parents were like, that's really far. So if you had to come home, it might be difficult. What if this? What if that? So I was like, okay, I'll be, you know, reasonable. Mm-hmm. I was like, oh, I'm going to move to Tennessee. So I just was like, oh, Tennessee is where I'm at. And this is somehow it's <laughs> stuck this long. That's right. <laughs> well, you got had to have been raised by some amazing people to, um, to, to end up where you're at, to have accomplished everything you've done. Yeah. <laughs> um, and we talk about this a lot. So you know, being a parent myself, as a you know, if your kid is getting in trouble all the time and, he, and they're hanging out with kids that get in trouble all the time, you say, "Hey, you, st- you gotta stop hanging out with them." <laughs> yeah. And um, my wife and I have launched um, hundred, a couple hundred, almost a couple hundred small businesses since 2015. The difference between the ones that made it and didn't were the belief in themselves, and it usually is based on the habitat in which they go home to, right? So the right. amount, the people that you hang out with, a lot of like. I'm a parent that hangs out with a lot of other parents. And w- what I figured out about being a parent is, is my job is not to keep my kids from getting hurt. It's to pick them up. Yeah. It, or it's not even to pick them up. It's to make sure they get up. Yeah. Let me fix that. So you get knocked down. That's it. Right yeah. now. Get up. You got to <laughs> exactly. get up. You got to get up. So um, how did, how was your relationship with your parents knowing that you're wanting to leave home, leave town Yeah. and basically go in business for yourself? Like what? Did you have a pile of money you were going with? Were you funded? Like, <laughs> what was it? Like, how'd it go? Did, oh, no. another question. Did you ever have to move back home one time? No. Nope. There it is. I didn't either. I'm so proud I didn't either. Um, no, never. Um, right. It's funny because um, I think, uh, although... I'm a very independent person, and I think that no. started as a as a as a young age. And so, um, I'm sure that I think my parents kind of noticed. Like, I'm I think more so they were probably like, okay, I get that you're you know, a 14, 15, 16, but you're still a child. And I'm like, no, I'm not. <laughs> <laughs> you know, so I kind of have always had that very strong independent personality. So I'm sure that my dad. Uh, for sure, many times said to me, I don't think that's a good idea, you know, mm-hmm. <laughs> over and over again. But always, like, mm. always kind of, like, empowered me to be who I am. If I wanted to do something, they knew I was going to do it. So, you know, supportive at the same time, you know, Absolutely. especially, like, when I was buying this, when I was buying this building or buying my houses, you know, just like, oh, well, you know, when I bought my first house, I was like, where do you think I should, you know, it's a good investment to put your money in uh, real estate, of course. Yeah. So I can remember a time when I was um, in uh, um, college and my dad sent me these Dave Ramsey videos of like uh, how the nuts and bolts of <laughs> financial, <That's right. laughs> like uh, trying to get me in a in a place that, you know, I understood financial That's so important, dude. things. So I've definitely learned my lessons and I think I just started to take that mm. and really um, build a foundation of um smart saving working really hard i always had like two or three jobs if i needed to work 90 hours a week i mean when i first moved here i worked 90 hours a week and like part-time jobs restaurants like whatever it took to get to where i wanted to be where i didn't have to do the side gigs anymore now i just work 90 hours a week at <laughs> yeah my shop. just about every millionaire <laughs> at one point in time had a side hustle yeah you have to you have to get from point a to point b so mm-hmm. um so yeah it just kind of like helps me through like uh, I, I just feel like I've always been a really hard worker and I think I've always gotten that from my dad, mm. uh, you know, so, yeah. 
That's fantastic. So, and yes, real estate, like, so real estate's very important. Um, you're in real estate now. Right? <laughs> yeah. Absolutely. I know. I'm like a, uh, like commercial real estate owner. Like I, right. I always forget. I should put that on my resume. You should, dude, it's a big deal. <laughs> it's a big deal. And that's a big asset you're sitting on. Yeah, for you sure. You know, um, and it's great. It's a great thing to be able to leverage anything in the business you need to on it, man. That's fantastic. Absolutely. Yeah. And I think it's been, you know, um, I never kind of pictured myself uh, owning like I honestly a lot of times forget that they uh, that I own the space. But, you know, when you invest so much money into um, I did a full renovation. And so in a pandemic where things were awful, yeah. like hard to uh, not, you couldn't get anything. So I was like, all right, what does Amazon have that, <laughs> that I right. can like do they have cabinets? Like, can you order a cabinets? Like, you know, I'm like trying to figure out how I can order like a hundred cabinets to put on the wall. Mm -hmm. But um, somehow we made it work and I kind of feel like that's my thing. Like if I am have my mind and I'm set to it, there's nothing that's getting in my way. If I, in fact, I have a really good um, contractor that helped me through this and I was like, okay, Jose, <laughs> like um, there are four buckets of this dry fall in Kentucky, <laughs> uh -huh. four hours away. And best believe he drove there for I me, he did. picked him up, brought him back, got it done. I was, um, when I was renovating the space, uh, I was actually, the last week it was like down to the crunch time of when, before I needed to be inspected for the state board. And I was in Croatia. So I'm like, <laughs> I'm mm. on a boat and I'm like, hey, um, I need this, this, and this done, and I need it all done when I get back because then we got to have the state board, right? And I came back, and he had everything, you know, dotted the I's and crossed the T's. He had everything done for me when I came back. Mm -hmm. And uh, it was like 100 degrees that week, and uh, I forgot. I was like, oh, yeah, dude, you should have turned the air on. <laughs> it was, the air was off. Uh -huh. <laughs> So I was like, I feel so bad, <laughs> but no, he's, he, he was awesome through the whole thing. So, <laughs> well, so there's a couple things you just brought up that we're, that we're going to dive into for sure. So one, we got to talk about your love for travel. Um, we got to talk about how you've been able to leverage social media. Um, but first and foremost, the, it's funny until I understood, understood money, I didn't have any. And once I understood it, I had it. Yeah. Right. So because, um, in, in a past life, when we owned restaurants and nightclubs, I didn't know how to manage money, so we made a ton of it. Yeah. It ain't, I don't have it. Yeah. <laughs> I like didn't have it long. You in know? and then out. <laughs> yes. I didn't, yeah. know, I didn't know how to manage it. Yeah. Um, you know, we, we were great at running the business. Yeah. Um, but I wasn't, I just didn't understand money. I, I can say I'm 42 years old. I didn't understand money until I was in my lid, mid to late 30s. Okay. And it's crazy because that's when our portfolio just blew up. Yeah. I think it's really important to understand um, all aspects of financial. And I will say, um, number one to understanding that is my accountant. Um, mm, that's he, right. You know, because I'm like, hey, what all can I write off? <laughs> you know, he just kind of breaks things down for me. But, you know, and also smart business decisions on like, okay, if I spend this on this, is this going to make me money? If it's not going to make me money, then we may maybe hold off on that. But also being in the beauty business, there are so many different aspects that we can that we can cover that that um, help people feel better about themselves, make themselves look better. Mm -hmm. And I feel like I'm, I can make good money at the same time and make other people like feel good. So mm. um, for me, Come on. it's just uh, finding the, the niche of like what you're doing. And I know there's a lot of people out there, like especially with all the side hustles out there right now, I am such a like I'm like get out there and get it like do it if you have six side hustles and three of them work perfect Bang. you know and I always tell I was telling someone the other day I was like you know people hate on like the Kardashians mm -hmm. but like like Kim Kardashian for example I'm like I look at her and I say, yes, she took something and made a huge like empire Absolutely. out of it. And she works hard, you know? So yeah. I'm like, I don't hate on anybody that, you know, tries to do whatever they can in order to, to better themselves and put themselves in a better financial situation. You know, the people that, that throw the hate out there, it's just because there's something un unhappy about themselves that's happening, you know, that's in there. And, 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 and like... And they don't know how to do that. Like, they don't know how to, like, it's like they sit and they constantly think about, how can I do this? How can I do this? Instead of just doing it. Like, yes. getting out there and just doing it is where you start, you know? You know, the more what you focus on grows. And the more, the more um, 
secure I became myself, the happier I became for other people and more great things started happening to me. It's yeah. almost like the universe knows and sends it back. You know what I mean? So well, that it gives you back what you put out. When you sit around and stress out about money, it, you're just going to be in this, this like circle. You're going to go round and round and not get anywhere. So I always tell people, I'm like, you know, talk to other people, go to, go to social events, like get mm. yourself out there and, and t see what other people are doing. Like there's just so many great things out there, especially just in the, in the world that we're in now, stuff you can do from home. Um, doesn't have to be a, like, a, you know, driving for DoorDash and you're, you know, delivering 30 times a week to catch the lawn and spa. <laughs> <That's right. laughs> I am a supporter of those people because... <laughs> That's right. We're giving a bunch of hits on that Listen. one. <laughs> but no, it's like I want to support other people's side hustle. Like, you know, there's just so many different things that you can do um, now to bring in income. So mm -hmm. and some people are really good at it and some people really give it their all. And that's not that's that, you know, that they, they at least they tried. At least right. if you can say you could try. That's right. It's um, it's amazing. I, I was always amazed at how. um. As, as a Christian man, you're always told to count your blessings over and over again, right? So being grateful matters, okay? Yeah. And, and again, what you focus on grows. So when you spend all day hating on other folks, you're just putting bad out, yeah. like just bad vibes, dude. And, and again, when you put good stuff out, you're in a good mood. Yeah. Right, your yeah. mood reflects what you're putting out. It's funny because I, uh, my my client, she'd kill me saying this, but I would call her a self sabotager all the time because she's got so many skills. She could do so many things, and I'm That's like, right. girl, you self sabotage yourself. She don't well, believe. She don't believe, and so I'm like, you're so talented at all these different things, but because she knows how to do all these things, but she doesn't know how to actually facilitate it into actually earned income. You know. Man. You know, there's a, there's so many great stories being told through television, like whether it's Derek Jeter or Michael Jordan or Venus and Serena Williams or um, the uh, the founders of Uber and all those great companies, no matter what industry they're in, if they're winning, especially, yeah. and the more, and the, especially the ones that are winning real big, all have something in common. And that's exactly what you're talking about right now. Yeah. And that's a certain belief um, in themselves. Well, and also hard work. Like, mm. you can't get nowhere without hard work. So hard work pays off. And sometimes it might take you 10 years. Sometimes it might take you 20 years. I know yeah. people that they didn't become successful until they were in their 50s, sometimes 60s. But at least you're getting from point A to point B. And at the end of it, you can say, you know what? That was a hell of a journey, you That's know? Right. <laughs> well, it's, you know, the, um, the people that don't put the work in it's because they don't believe right you know what i mean so i always tell um our new our new um our new entrepreneurs you know if you have an issue you can trace it back to your plan or your effort yeah and, and you know you can't have a, your plan won't get executed if your or your effort won't be good if your plan's not solid right and you have to believe in that plan it has to be well thought out you have to know the end and all that kind of stuff so um i mean you're you're you are literally just pounding amazing <laughs> stuff right and that was the first ever like multiple hit <laughs> we've ever had um in the history of the show right because i mean it was just you were on fire i am here for entertainment man so let me see because i had some you know we we take a lot of a lot of effort pre-show to make sure that we we cover everything we want to cover and um i want to make sure that we're still on topic here because I, I mean seriously you could we could go all over the place yeah um with your journey and everything else so did we did i get all of the background in we got you to nashville yeah. um so how did you end up going from nashville to la and then back yeah, so it's funny because I was working still six days a week in my salon and um, I was traveling like uh, I would leave here on a Sunday and come back on a Tuesday every week. Wow. For about two years. Wow. Yeah. So I was like mm. back and forth. And so, you know, and then I've met other awesome people in L.A. along the road. It was funny because I... Um, I actually uh, was doing hair for uh, a Hallmark artist or um, Hallmark uh, actress. And it was funny. She's like, hey, you know, do you have time? We're about to film this movie um, in Vancouver and I need I need my hair done. And I was like, I mean, I'm leaving like tomorrow, but you can come to my hotel room. So I was like coloring, cutting her hair in my Marriott, you know, in L.A. at like 10 o'clock at night. So I was like, but it's just I've met so many cool people along the way and I don't know, like when I was out, like back and forth from um, uh, between L.A. and Orange County, I just met a lot of different like up and coming 
actors and actresses and I love the marketing and the networking part of mm. that you know what I mean so I'm a big person that like and like this was before the pandemic right before the pandemic and um so I kind of miss I kind of miss like the um socialization of that too because now it's like I since I opened this salon and spa um, I've been kind of like six days a week, seven days a week, you know? And so when I get to do things like this, this is fun for me because it brings me back to like, um, right. uh, being more social with, uh, different people. So absolutely. Yeah, absolutely. So, um, you've mentioned, um, the network and that's something that you either, you either get it or you don't in the beginning. It can be, it can be taught and it can be learned, but everybody knows people. Yeah. Everybody has acquaintances, friends, colleagues, whatever. Yeah. Um, the people that are able to figure out how to leverage those contacts and turn those contacts into contracts yeah. um, usually financially enjoy their life. Yeah. Right? And they would be considered successes. Yeah. Okay, those air quotes for those of you that are just <laughs> listening with us today. Um, talk to me about the the value because you do the same. It's It's... In my opinion, social media is just what you do online versus it's networking online versus networking in person, right? You got to do both. Yeah. So uh, a big part of how I actually started my social media audience and following was um, I being a platform artist for a hair color company. So okay. I would travel around the U.S., you know, whether it be L.A., Atlanta, sometimes smaller towns, you know, and uh, we'd put on these big shows, you know, huge conventions in um, Las Vegas, like things like that. So people see me on stage uh, doing the hair cut, color, whatever. And then afterwards, um, after the show was over, I would go out in the audience and I would talk to every single person. I, and I would stay until I, I talked to everybody that had questions for me. Mm. So I feel like it started to build on that. And because also I feel like in this business that I'm in, you have to be able to talk to people. Like there are some people that sit in your chair and they don't want to say anything, they don't want to talk. And then there are other people that like the whole time, like, I mean, it's a it's a whole story situation and you're building with them and you create this relationship with them, right? Mm -hmm. So it all kind of started with the hair shows. So people would see me there, like I was building the audience, the hair audience, of course. Um, through Instagram as it became really, really popular. And then of course, then that built from being on the show and then people were seeing me there. So uh, networking is so important to me because we always have to connect with, um, because if I'm working with stylists, I'm on, I'm going to connect with them. They have questions because a lot of these people, they're in small towns. They haven't had education in a couple of years. So me making sure that I could stay and answer all of their questions was like super important to me. That's so cool. Then I created this relationship with them. And so and still today I get messages on Instagram all the time. Hey, you know, I have a color question. Hey, I have this, you know, and it's such a special thing because, right. you know, I get to connect with other people um, outside this salon that's right yeah. that's right so um using social media to um to create and promote yep. the body of work yep right and then leveraging the the contacts uh the personal contacts with those people so like let's say if you hadn't like you were on a big television show right well it's safe to say that if you didn't do anything past that what would have happened? Like, that's just, that's not the key. Like, that's not it. It you takes to, more, right? Yeah, you have to definitely build on it because if you're not being relevant and, 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 and through, like, the pandemic was really hard for me as, like, with, I'm used to doing huge shows. I'm used to talking to people all the time. And then suddenly our, my business went from, I have all these, uh, all this stuff going on to like, I mean, I was in Dubai, like when the pandemic broke out. Mm. And so I'm like, I went from Dubai to a convention in Vegas, then to Mexico. And then all of a sudden I come home and then uh, like the world shut down. Right. Yeah. So that was like a huge, like it took the, the networking and the, the, this part of me and sort of doled it down. And I was like, I don't know how to be this person. I can't just sit in my backyard. <laughs> like I, mm -hmm. I can't do this. I have to like, you know, I'm a social person. And so, um, through that, I, I then started to try to create content because I had the time. So I'd be like, hey, 
I know you're supposed to stay at home, but if you want to come get your hair done, I can take pictures. You know, I, they would come in and we would, uh, I would post and try to keep relevant with the audience and stuff like that. But yeah, it definitely gets harder and harder as uh, the busier that you get. Cause now I went from like zero to 60 yeah. and now I'm like, I have a amazing, uh, marketing girl that does all my stuff for me and she can post. Now we've like po- started posting on the, uh, on the catch page. And so now it's a little easier having help. I'm sure as you know, when you're Absolutely. trying to do it all yourself, it is impossible. It's like without other people, you it, it, it's impossible to do it all. I like to do it all in the beginning so I know, one, if they're doing a good job, but yeah. I know what they're doing, especially when you're assigning a dollar value to that. Correct. Like, so if, you know, it, if I've done it, I can relate to if what they're asking for is fair or not enough or too much or any of those things. Well, it's right? like, like you say, like I, I wouldn't ask somebody to do something I wouldn't do myself. That's right. So it's like, if I've done it myself for the last however many years, I, it's, it, I can now delegate that, feel comfortable delegating the right job to the right person and knowing yeah. that they're gonna be able to do that. You know? and, and knowing when to do that, the timing of those things. And my wife was a great um, example. I, I'll never forget it because we started having a house cleaner keeper before we had a lawn person right i actually used to love cutting the grass because <laughs> man the lawnmower was loud dude so it was just me yeah. <laughs> it was just me for that time you know um and i yeah. liked it and i had the little more like forrest gump drove yeah and, uh, <laughs> the little, my granddad gave that to me but um when um when she closed me we needed a house cleaner yeah so i had to come by once a week and clean the house real good she said, Nick, look, at, it takes me this amount of hours. To do it, yeah. And she wasn't saying, I am I want those hours and I'm not going to do anything in those hours. She was saying, I need to reassign those hours for something more productive. Delegate it. That's right. And, and if I can, if I get, let's say it was four hours, she'll shoot me if that's not right. But if it was four hours that it was take, that she, <laughs> she gets back, what could she do with those four hours that we're paying somebody $200 for? Absolutely. You know? Yeah, no, I'm the same way. I'm like, well, I justify everything because like I'm super busy 100% of the time. So when I come home, Mm. I want that to be my downtime. So like me, I have a a lady that comes to clean the house and then she comes to clean the salon. See, it's like a two for one deal. There you go. That's right. (laughs) Got to have both places because then also it's like when people come to the salon, I am like super OCD. So I'm like every little, every little thing has to be perfect all the time and when you have hair when you're working with hair oh gosh it's every <laughs> she's like she was like how do you deal with this there's hair everywhere all the time i'm like you just sweep it up every 30 minutes <laughs> That's right. it's just how it is so That's we right. we it's learned like sand to, on the beach oh my gosh yeah it's it's insane <laughs> <laughs> it's everywhere well it's um i'm you know there's something about people that think that way so they make fun of me here because everything like my desk looks the same every day yeah. right um i walk in the front room up there and if something's not exactly the way it goes i'll go adjust yeah. it and they laugh mm-hmm. and i learned that working in, in retail like i'm like so when we first put it there it went in that position why because it looked best yeah. right there right so i'm like well is today not as important as yesterday <laughs> Because if it is, then it needs to be the same. Same, every right? Day. It's the same thing. It's yeah. like some people will wear a suit out of nowhere, and I'm like, dude, you look great. Is that, <laughs> are you gonna do that tomorrow? Nah, just no. today. I'm like, well, so today's more. Why is today more important than tomorrow? Like that's that a good way to. Yeah, that's a good way to put it. I never really thought about it like that, but it's it's definitely a good way to put it. Well, they still make fun of me, but at least they know that it's it's. And, and I'm usually the best in the room, so that like lets them know that like okay, he knows. At least he knows what he's talking about. Yeah, yeah. I'm the same way. I'm like I like things to be a certain way, and I like I don't like it touch so like my cleaning lady like same thing she knows so we pick it up and we wipe it and then we put it right back oh it drives me that's my <laughs> biggest challenge dude um and i can always tell when i get in the shower the first time i'm like well my razor oh no go there. yeah <laughs> the same way yeah. i'm like my shampoo bottles are all over the place this is not where this goes <laughs> i can't tell you how many times i've picked up the wrong one because and, i wouldn't pay attention i get it oh, in my hand no. i'm like oh, oh no. no and you know where my wife gets the good stuff yeah so it's like hey, she lets it, you use the good stuff yeah I, oh. well look i have oh, to yeah. i'm known for mine right so <laughs> yeah because most most uh of my clients when i when uh their husband has no hair right mm. why is your husband using your good shampoo give him something crappy in there because they're like you know three four pumps of the shampoo yes. and i'm like this is sixty dollars that's right <laughs> i was like well then he can't he can't complain on how much you're spending on it because he's using too much of it <laughs> the um my wife was they all make fun of me um with my hair so when we were actually the team and i were headed out to um to vegas tomorrow for some work and 
um, I was like, you know, I really wish I always have to carry the big bag because the little bag's full of my hair stuff. Yeah, you got to have the hair bag. Yeah, right. So because mine's not straight. My, so, <laughs> oh, okay. Oh, yeah. So, so it goes you, through the treatment uh, and, okay. and and a relaxation mm-hmm. every other time too. And, yeah. Mm-hmm. And the yep. whole, oh yeah, the whole nine. It's funny because it's pe- a commitment. People <laughs> people make fun of me because like I'm like a little bit opposite because like I just went to Europe for two weeks with a carry on. Mm. <laughs> <laughs> with a carry on I am like she's and, making me look and, and, and people will like look at me and they're like how what like and I tell everybody this I'm like I have all the secrets to packing but I and it it, it depends on where you're going because if it's like for me like if I have to actually style and bring the tools and the things otherwise I can just like scrunch and go and I like my I like my hair beachy and natural and because mm. that's me but uh, yeah, I'm usually the smallest suitcase and the less and the people it was funny because on this last trip uh, one of my clients came on the boat with us and she's thinking, oh, my hairstylist there, she'll have shampoo. I had brought just enough for the days that I'm here. That's right. <laughs> I was like, no shampoo for you. <laughs> that was what I, I used to tell my son. I was like, well, those people are like extra rich because they just buy it when they get there and leave it and come home. Like yeah. they don't travel with no. their stuff. No. And then <laughs> it's funny because literally everybody that was on the boat with us, nobody brought shampoo. I said, nobody brought shampoo in here. So we had to go to like uh, this grocery store and my, my cousin got like, you know, Italian Pantene. I was like, there was probably a salon around the corner. You could have went and got something better. And he was mm. like, it was a dollar fifty. You know, I was like, no kidding. That's right. Oh, no. that's not good. <laughs> no. Like, you shouldn't take pride in that. Like, you shouldn't tell anybody else ever that you spent a dollar and fifty on no, shampoo. No, never. I'm just like, I'm mortified. And I was like, next time, I guess I have to ask people. I'll bring your or tell them bring your shampoo because I'm only rationing enough for me. So that's right. <laughs> that's right. You know, I might have made that mistake too. <laughs> Well, you do. So you do like to travel. Oh, yeah. Right. So um, talk to me about how you've been able to um, enjoy the travel, but also like you probably get influenced. You probably do a lot of things, learn a lot of things, um, come back inspired, like all that kind of stuff. Totally. Well, and that's the thing. Like I work six days a week. So I kind of like bank that seventh, you know, another day. Uh, over the course of a couple months and I take like a week off and I go somewhere. So go. I just went to Italy and because I was originally supposed to go to Italy like last year, but things were still not open. So I, I pushed it off to this year. I guess I should have went last year because it would have been less busy and less hot. But, you know, but here we are. It was mm-hmm. fabulous. But um, I really have a passion for travel. Um, I enjoy going to other cultures and like seeing how how they live and their language and right. just all these fun things. It's really inspiring to me. Um, and just how like, um, for example, a lot of Europe, their food is amazing. And like you can go there and eat whatever you want, as much as you want, drink as much as wine, whatever, you know, and come back and not feel like crap, you know. So it makes me really puts a perspective for me when I come back and I'm eating food here and it's like, oh gosh, I just feel awful like yeah. after that. So my wife is big on like the all the artificial preservatives and everything. Yeah. Like we eat really clean. Really clean. Yeah. yeah. See, and for me, a like lot of even my energy drink, it's not like her traditional thing. She was like, she found the one that like it's, yeah. tastes good, but it's got all the clean stuff in it. And yeah. Cause everything. It, so it, Alani, you owe me for this one, man. <laughs> But it's good. It's good. <laughs> it's hard to find like really clean stuff. And and honestly, like because I'm on the go a lot. So sometimes like, OK, I know I'm going to be home this week and then I'll buy groceries. But then like something mm-hmm. happens and I get busy and I'm at the salon and and even my salon, I have a full like refrigerator kitchen, you know, area like I, I, I could totally just. But uh, most of the time I'm so busy all day long, I can't even eat. Yeah. So I try to like so it's when I go there, I feel like I really enjoy the food and I enjoy Way, like the culture and everything about it so I'm very inspired by that and it when I come back I'm refreshed um, you know I, I look at sleep a lot of time as recovery and like it's funny the worse I eat the more sleep I need it's because your body needs that much more time to recover from yeah, it's crazy exactly well that's the thing like I I feel like I didn't get enough sleep on vacation because in Italy they don't eat dinner until like 11 and I'm like I will have, I will have been in bed for four hours I don't know what 11 p.m I'm like I eat at five <laughs> Yeah, I mean, my, most of our places ain't even open anymore. No. So like, is that for real? How does that no, work? No, like literally the cities are alive at like hmm. 11, like till two in the morning. I what mean, about early in the morning? No, nobody's out. <laughs> nobody's out. So that's like breakfast is like not a thing there. And I'm like, 
Okay, so it was funny because we were on this boat and we, um, we, I, I wanted the hostess with us because I wanted, I, when I'm on vacation, I want somebody to make my meals. And I've done this twice before. So uh, we hire the hostess and we get there and she's like, 22 college student you know I'm like oh cool like you might you're this thinking about doing this you know and she I didn't realize this was her first time and I didn't realize she couldn't cook oh yeah so we're on the boat and we have all these things like and she like could just boil water and put the pasta in and like put some tomato sauce on top and I, was I think like, I could manage that I yeah I was like oh my gosh so or like put and I was like okay well burrata and like prosciutto i mean like i guess that's what we're eating all week you know oh. but in the evenings we would go out to eat like on the different islands and stuff on the amafi and uh i was like we were we, we had to take the the dinghy from the boat to get to the uh to land for the restaurants and so we go up to this uh i think it was in sorrento and i mean we're up there it's 11 o'clock and we had to walk two miles to this like strip of restaurants and i mean hundreds of people everywhere it's like 11 our, our dinner reservation was at 11 wow like at 11 and so i literally fell asleep on the table like wow this and i'm like i'm an old lady wow. <laughs> i can't hang <laughs> that's nuts i didn't know that about uh i hadn't been over there so i didn't know yeah it seems like a lot of different like europe is is very much like that like in the morning maybe paris is a little different like i've been in like in paris in the morning london i don't think is so much like that but like when i went to egypt like I egypt nobody's out in the morning not one person you won't see them till noon well, wait a minute so when is, weren't crepes made in europe when do they eat those are that is that not breakfast food i think it's no i think it's no no <laughs> it's not the ihop you know like <laughs> Well, that's, you know, when in, at the Paris in Vegas, that's, they have that's the, all the, the creperies crepes. and everything and okay. they're fantastic and they promote the breakfast. The breakfast. No, they, no, these places. Well, Liar. I mean, like Liars. in Paris, I think they, they do have the crepes and they have the croissant with the chocolate that's delightful. Yeah. But I think it's like they sit, uh, they, they go to a cafe. Everybody in Paris goes to a cafe f to eat. And then they sit there and they drink their coffee and they have their croissant or whatever. I will tell you, I had the most amazing crepe in um, in Paris with like the Nutella and banana. Oh, yeah. I think about that all the time and I'm like, I should really get on a plane and go there. Mm. But I can't remember where it was. But <laughs> it was so good. But yeah, no, they don't. That was like at four o'clock in the afternoon. You know, you just stop mm. in and you grab a crepe. I don't know. <laughs> the boys are going to be wanting to do crepes at the Paris in Vegas, aren't they, Connor? Where are you guys staying in Vegas? We're at the at Resorts World. Oh, okay. I haven't been there. It's new, right? It is, and it's okay. unbelievable. Yeah, I, love I love Vegas. It. Actually, that's uh, that's um, where I've thought of the name, well, found the name for my salon when I, at the Aria, there's a restaurant called Catch. Yep. And it's super trendy, super cool, and so I was like, oh my God, this would make an amazing salon name, because it's like, you know, you can do a play off words and say, you know, girl, you're a catch, you know, that's like, right. and different stuff like that, so that that's kind of where I came up with the name when I, when I started it, so, but I love Vegas. I, I usually stay at the Cosmo, but now there's all these new places that are open. The Cosmo has secret pizza in there. Have you ever? Yeah. Oh, yeah, oh, the secret man. pizza. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So, yeah, yeah, I told you it was real. I told you. <laughs> it's fantastic. It's a little hole in the wall. Yeah, you just like, yeah, from, through around the corner. Yeah, no, it's cool. I mean, I I love Vegas. I was actually there right before the pandemic happened, and I'm like, I haven't been back since, and I was actually telling her, I was like, I really feel like I need to go to Vegas because I love, I just, I'm, I am the old lady that like sits at the slot machines and I'm like, this is so fun. I'll be there for like hours and I'll sw change my machines. And I'm like, I don't know what I'm doing any of the time and I lose all the money, but it's fun. That's right. <laughs> As That's long as right. you have the money in your pocket where you're like, okay, this is what I'm allowed to spend. And it's like an allowance. This is what I'm okay with losing because this is what I'm spending on entertainment, right? Everything's a discipline, right? And, in then, the world. and then I lose it all and then I'm like, well, crap. At the end of the day, everything's a discipline. <laughs> so you have been, you've mentioned, um, we were literally training on it um, this morning. I'm always, we have um, something that we do. Um, at team here at Team Hider, and that is um, we call it the um, the million dollar month. So when in two thousand and I believe it was two thousand fifteen, um, I I always hated reading books because I was always made to do that. So I never liked to do them uh, to read. And um, I, the social media was happening, and you know Gary Vee and Grant Cardone and those guys were on the rise. And I, so they weren't as accessible on the internet as they right. are now. You had to read their books. He's crazy, Grant Cardone. It's crazy. Oh, so, oh my gosh. So I read a, uh, a book called Think and Grow Rich, right, okay. um, which is a great book. And um, there's a, a book that, that was supposed to, I can't remember if it was supposed to come before or after that, but it's called The Strangest Secret. And 
I read that book, and in that book, it's a, like a 45-minute audio book, and it's horrible to listen to. It was recorded like 100 <laughs> years ago, but the message is great. Um, and it said, get an index card and write 10 of the easiest things you could you could do every day for 30 days. Okay. Right? So it's literally like AA, right? <laughs> So the first thing I learned was that I didn't know how to set a goal that was actually applicable to what we were trying to accomplish. So I was like, instead of saying just drink a sip of water, I was like, drink a gallon of water, right? right? And things that I didn't know that if I got sick or something like that, or somebody died or something bad happened, like I wasn't going to be able to do it. The goal is to do it for 30 days in a row to trick your mind to doing things you set out to do. So in uh, every time you fail, you rip up your card and you have to write another one and start over on day one. Okay. On the 16th card... (laughs) My wife and I realized that we were, in fact, the problem, <laughs> right? So, um, and the, that was the moment that our lives changed. changed. From then on out, the trajectory was always good, but it was always there was always a crash landing at the mm-hmm. end, and then we just stopped crashing after that. And it was yeah. when we realized we were the problem, and um, and and, I, and we still do that um, that exercise today. But the point was, is those ten things had to happen regardless of what, what life threw at us or anything else, and it taught us to be real intentional about what it is that we do to have, you either have momentum one way or another. You're either losing or winning. There's no in between. Right. Mm-hmm. So it, it taught us to have momentum going in, in uh, the positive favor, but it also taught us to be intentional with our time. We had to do this, do these certain things every single day. You've been you've talked about it multiple times about like managing your time. And I mean, you're running a business. You have clients. Yeah. You're traveling. you got a building to, uh, to keep up. You have people that, so booth rentals or whatever, however they do, you have to manage that process. Yeah. Mm-hmm. You have a home life you got friends you got all these things dogs dogs you told me a hilarious story <laughs> about that earlier um that's right so you and you have two of them two of them right yeah. so that's two um two beings that only get to go to the bathroom if you allow them to do that right and all these things like it's a big responsibility yeah. thanks to my dog my dog sitter now because i was like hey i need you to let my dog out like <laughs> that's right but you had to remember that right yeah so for sure yeah how like what we trained on this morning was is we, we have all the people fill out what we call a power list. It's they, In the old days, they called it a map of life. It's basically like a daily planner. Okay. And I'm like, look, if you do great, wouldn't you love to know how what you did so you could repeat it? I'm like, so I just looked at them. I was like, what did you do on Tuesday, July 12th? I don't know. <laughs> right? Well, wouldn't it be nice if you did? Yeah. You know, so we have all of our guys fill out a power list. Connor does it every day like clockwork. I do it too, but we have a power list. I'm like, imagine if you had a 365 day book for this entire year Yeah. that you could know, hey, I need to double my marketing because it's a tough month or hey, these are the months I did good and why. And I worked this Saturday and it was great versus all those other things, right? So, oh, absolutely. Like you're obviously good at that or you couldn't have accomplished what you'd done. Yeah, it's very like, oh, all the things that you're saying, like, so I sort of have a routine where every morning I sit outside with my dogs, of course, and I go through um, projections, numbers, what we did, what we need to do, what we need to order. Like it's like because once I hit the ground running for the day and I, I'm I'm working, um, I don't have time. So mm. like I, I always tell people, I'm like it's like I wake up and I think about business, and I go to sleep and I think about business. You know, there's a lot of things that are in between there, but those are like that's that's what my mind is constantly focused on bettering the business how do we do this differently what can we change and i write it down (laughs) so Mm. it's like one of those things where i think we've gotten out of the habit of uh writing things down so like you're saying making a list but every morning it's like everybody has their routine right i drink what i call jet fuel like (laughs) energy drink Mm -hmm. and i sit down and i go over everything to make sure everything's in order because if we are not paying attention to what's going on Mm -hmm. then we're we're not gonna we're not gonna succeed there's some people that i know that like they own businesses and i'll be like oh well like you know how was your last month what did you do here oh you know i don't know i'd have to look and i'm like i could tell you exactly what i did the last six months you know all up here and i don't have it in front of me but i know or like a roundabout way of like this is what we did this is what we're projected to do this is you know all of these numbers yeah and but but keeping on top of it and making it a habit you know the mindset difference between an employee versus a business owner is, you know, like imagine if you're just like, um, I don't, you know, my, I'll use my sister as an example. Um, I remember back in the day before she had her, her shift, she'd be like, ah, oh, it's my day off. I'm like, well, what does that mean? Yeah. Like, what are you taking a day off it's from? Day off. <laughs> she was like, well, it's my day off from work. I'm like, so I don't understand. Like, that'd be like me saying, sorry, son, it's my day off. Like, you know, there's certain things <laughs> yeah. I take time off. Yeah. I take time for me and I manage it, but not not days off. And um, 
but but again, it's it's intentional, right? And yeah. and it serves a purpose. So you know, one of the questions I asked the team this morning was, is like, so you're going to finish your day today, right? How do you know if you did a good job? <laughs> That's a good question. How do you know if it was successful? Yeah. So, you know, you might look at, well, we revenue is X. I reached a, mar- I reached a certain amount of people marketing. I set a certain number of appointments or I qualified a certain number of folks or whatever yeah. it may be versus just like, well, it's time to go. I showed up. I put in my eight and I'm leaving. Yeah. You know, I, I sort of measure also the fact that like, I, I mean, for me, I, I have a different client in my chair every hour, two hours, something, you know, sometimes 10 people a day, sometimes six people a day. What I kind of do- You're the a therapist. End, <laughs> oh, you have no idea. Um, but I, what I kind of do is say, okay, I hope I hope I made everybody's day today. And mm. I'd always want to like, this is something I sometimes will beat myself up about, but I try not to. But I'm like, if something in me is off, like I'm tired, I'm stressed or whatever, I think back and I'm like, I can't let that reflect on my time with my clients because oh my one, gosh. they'll say it, they'll see it. Um, but also sometimes I'll beat myself up and I was like, man, I was just so tired today. I feel like I didn't give everybody my best. Gosh, that's so awesome. You know what I mean? And I honestly, I feel, I feel really bad because like, before I was leaving for Italy, I felt like the last two, three days, I was like, I just was, I, the only thing I could see was vacation. And I never want to get to that point. Yeah. I don't like when I get to that point because then I feel like I'm not everything to someone. You mm. know what I mean? And so, like, for example, the last week, I have had 12, 13. Today, I had another new client, 14 new clients in the last week, the last seven Wow. Years. So that's a lot. And so meeting new people, yeah. making like asking them about their lives, their families, all of these things matter to me. And um, it's important for me to create that relationship with them. So absolutely, <laughs> I tend to look back on that on the end of the day or the end of the week. And I sort of in my mind think, OK, hopefully, hopefully everybody liked their service this week. Hopefully, you know, everything was good. But, you know, sometimes you can be off. But then mm. you just uh, tomorrow's another day. Well, I told everybody they were going to be. They were going to enjoy this, right? So, and, and, and honestly, everything you've said, you've been adding hits, hit after hit after hit. But like the what you just said is what makes you a rock star. Um, is is that that's that's a defining thread in that that makes up a business owner and entrepreneur, right? So, um, I think we got a lot of great uh, nuggets out of the mindset behind it. But now, like your product. Yeah. Is, is legitimately on its own, right? So let's talk about that. So you, you mentioned how you got the name. First of all, let's tell folks where they can follow it on uh, socials, right? So it's uh, the website's catchnashville.com. Right. Catch Nash um, on, on all your socials, right? Yeah, catch.nash, um, yep. Catch.nash, and then you have your own personal ones as well. Yeah, so my personal, andrea.harbison.hair is where like my, that's like my, basically my hair portfolio. I post things on there and like life things too. Yep. Um, so yeah, we, yeah, catches, um, it's beautiful a, website, by the way. Thank you. You know, what's funny. I will tell you this story. Um, I have this, she started out as a marketing intern. I've known her since she was, uh, they moved here. Uh, I don't even know. Like I'm, I'm guessing it was maybe her eighth grade year, or her freshman year. Well, she started going to MTSU. She needed a marketing internship. And she reached out to all these people and her mom was in my chair one day and I said, she was like, ah, she, Shannon can't find uh, an internship and she's got to have this to graduate. And I was like, well, I mean, she could come help me. And That's she right. was like, really? And I was like, absolutely. And honestly, it's been so fun. It's been awesome. Like yesterday would have been her day off. It was a Sunday and she came to my house to help us um, organize our new um spa packages i spent four hours on a sunday to help us reorganize our spa packages it's amazing so she went from an intern with me now she's full-time and until you know she somebody steals her way from me i guess but Mm -hmm. you know because she's so good at what she does i don't want her to be limited just to me she's gonna branch out and do other things but yeah she created the website for me from scratch and it's beautiful she's like straight out of school like just she actually just graduated on saturday so wow congratulations to her yeah she did a fabulous job so that that was awesome so um yeah we've just been creating this brand um of course we've had the salon for years but now we have moved into the aspect of spa so we are mainly focused on like anti-aging so we're kind of like okay 
Um, more I, f- I like, need more of that. <laughs> well, and it's like there's so many people in this area that just, you know, that we're so busy, stuff going on. And some people like to resort straight to like Botox or filler. I've done it, you know. And so now we have these really amazing um, technology devices that can give long-term results without being invasive. And so that's okay. really what we're like focusing on now. So we're unique to really this um this concept is unique because a lot of people are doing a lot of different things but we're really trying to specialize and focus on the non-invasive um anti-aging treatments so the uh, all the coming from a, a sports background most sports guys when they're not wearing their uniform i can just speaking for baseball players and they're gonna roast me for this for saying <laughs> this but like you know i when i look back when I was in my uniform, you know, it was like, oh, dude, I got this bracelet, I got yeah. this arm sleeve, I had all these things. And then you would put on your normal clothes. And quite frankly, I didn't give two shits about those. Like, yeah. you know, I looked ridiculous. <laughs> and, you know, you're always told beauty is within and so on and so forth. But like, there's a certain amount of like packaging matters, right? And, and yes. oh my gosh, it matters. And for me, it just shows that you give a crap yeah about like you know appearance 100 percent matters and for sure. and and it matters for me like i have more confidence if i feel good about yep. the way things go that day like seriously a bad hair day, hair day ruins ruins things for sure <laughs> yeah hair day like i was uh telling them yesterday i was like i look like a homeless person these nails can't i i i'm not super high maintenance because i i it's it, it can be hard to be when i'm working all the time but yeah. like last night i was like i have to go get these nails done because now this looks ridiculous and people are gonna i talk with my hands sure. <laughs> so i'm like i'm just like i'm showing everybody so um but no it does and and then after i got it done i was like oh my gosh that really made me feel better like it made me feel good about myself Man. so it goes with the face too like face hair nails clothes all these things exercise they matter and Absolutely. they also uh piece together to make you feel good you know yes yeah. as a, you know um my son is 13 he looks like his mother so he's really good looking <laughs> um but like i'm like dude like are you leaving the house like did you brush your hair did oh. like now he's he's really good about it now we have you know he's got mr good hair his brush and the, the, and all that kind of stuff but the, like i just when my wife says you look nice today or my son says dude dad i like that shirt yeah dude, it I, makes feel you like feel mi- yeah. I feel like i feel like a million dollars yeah that's awesome no and that it's so funny you said that like that age group of like 13 to 15 I don't know what it is, but like I, it's uh, I, I, I'm a jokester. I'm like a, I just throw jokes all the time. But I'll put all of my hair in my face when these kids come in, and I'm like, so does this look good? <laughs> like, mm. Just to show them, because they're like everything. They're like, I just want it to like come to like right below my eye, and I'm like, what? Can you see? <laughs> like, yeah. But it's a trend right now, and they want it curly. I can't tell you. I've done more boy perms, huh. perms in the last six months than I've done women's perms. Interesting. Mm-hmm. Well, they okay. want the flow. They want the flow. Yeah, they want the like the the curls with the long hair and flipping it back. Connor's and, got the flow. Yeah. See, see Connor's got the you, flow. But it's natural, right? See, so not everybody's born with, no. you know, beautiful curly hair. So these ones that, I have you know, the McDonald's arches right there in the front. Like, there, there's nothing. Is or, it the uh, cowlick? Yeah. The <laughs> so, yeah. So my hairline comes like way down to here. So a lot of people don't know that. Like, we actually like, this is a little bit like we created the hairline to go wow. with the hairstyle. Oh, well, that's yeah. awesome. That's actually a great idea. Yeah. When you can kind of define your hairline versus like, you know just when i first grew it out and it was like it was bad because i'd always had short hair until i think i was 35 or 30 when i just decided i've got to wash the stench off from the past we're starting over i was i changed everything about even my physical appearance well i think that 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 makes a big difference because i think um i'm a big advocate if you don't like something change it that's right you know because what's the sense in you know sitting around and Oh, I don't. I hate my hair, or oh, I hate this, or I hate that. Just change it. No worries. You know. That's right. I mean, and and uh, something as simple as a hairstyle is so easy to do that um, it's it's a it's a cool easy fix for sure. So anti aging, obviously, um, the, as far as like the hair and everything else, because I mean, you've been hired by the 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 biggest names on the planet to do it. <laughs> Congratulations on that again, by the way. But like, so. I mean, you could have just traveled around doing that. What made you like w- want to do the salon thing, put plant roots and, and I mean, you're literally like, I look at the booth rentals and stuff. I'm like, those are fr- You're a property owner. Yeah. Right. And they're renting space. Yeah. So, like you're a landlord. Yeah. Yeah. So 
you know, um, yeah, I definitely could have traveled around. Like, I, I mean, for several years, that's all I did for, I mean, with the housewives and then with um, the color uh, when I was doing education. Um, but, you know, it was weird because I enjoyed go- being in a different city all the time, going to new restaurants, you know, just all over the U.S., Um, But what I realized is that I loved having a home base. I loved coming back home because like some of these regulars, they've been with me for 12 years. um, And when they sit in my chair, Mm. I don't know. I just I love a full day of my regulars, too, because like we just, you know, shoot the shit all day. It's fun. You know, I give them champagne. We have a good time. Like uh, it's like they're a friend. You know what I mean? Mm. And there was just something very... The clients um, matter. The client, it, 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 it's just, I don't even know how to explain it, but when I would come home and I would be in my salon, I just was like, oh, this is so great. Because honestly, yeah. uh, celebrity hair and and working and being on someone else's schedule all the time is tough. It's it's, a, it's very high pressure too, I'd imagine, right? Yes, it's very tough. And so it's like, you know, you, you, you have to do everything for that person. And so I don't know, it just, uh, when I started, with the salon and had that, I was just like, this is, it kind of feels right, you know? And so, and I care about my people. Like I really do. They care about me and I care about them and you know, they are friends. So it just kind of becomes that way. You know, we've been very blessed in, in our ability to, to tell a lot of great, stories from amazing people who the stories that they get to tell here are a little bit different from the thousand other interviews they do elsewhere. Um, but at the same time, we don't want to like, obviously those things matter and that's what people like care about a lot. Right. Right. So, um, what else as far as, um, like how, how you got to where you, so you talked about how you got to where you're at. What's the future? Like, is this, are you just going to have the one location? Like what's the plans for you? So uh, there's a lot of things um, kind of in play where I feel like, okay, I have my location. Once I get my location to where I feel like it runs itself, we're definitely going to, That's that was kind of the whole point behind the branding of Catch, mm. having something that's brandable, brandable name. Because in this industry and really anything anymore with social media, it has to be brandable. So I wanted to set myself up with something that I could expand um you know whether it be the hair or whether it be the spa and uh so definitely an expansion maybe more locations mobile something like that those are all kind of in the works it's just kind of seeing like where we're at like if it's if if it comes to a point where like i'm like you know what i'm really comfortable with this i feel like we can build here then i might go that direction but because of the way that I think I'm like I'm thinking up here so I'm like sky is the limit we can do whatever we want so I feel like I'm uh Damn right about I'm, a, that. I'm a big believer in things happen for a reason mm. and I feel like things will fall into place as they as they do and I don't want to force it I have like I'm going to manifest my goals and then I'm going to just like let it fall mm. wherever it but at the still at the same time working every day towards mm. towards an expansion or a goal so yeah you know, another thing the Million Dollar Month taught us was the power of what well, you just mentioned the word manifest, you know, because that stuff's real, man. For and, sure. And what's real about it is, is the more you manifest something, the more you visualize it happening. Right. Yep. And, and that's literally how like dreams and goals are made. Right. So um, my boy Brad taught me, he was like, like, so you want a big house. Well, like, what does that mean? What is yeah. like, w- not just what does that mean? Like which big house? Yeah. Like, you know what I mean? He's Design like, it. he's like, if you want a plane, like what logo is, is on the seats in the plane? Lo- co- yeah. What color are the seats? Like the more, the more, the smaller of a target means you're a better shot. Right. So yeah. like, that's just the, 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 the vague goals never, never happen. Yeah. It was funny because I was joking with my cousin when we were in Italy last week, we were off the island of Capri and you're just like mega yacht, mega yacht, mega yacht. And I'm like, what do these people do? My like, dad used to say that all the time. I mean, I, I'm like sitting here and 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 one had a helicopter parked on the top. And I'm like, what do they do? Mm-hmm. I'm like, can we make, I'm like telling the captain, can, he didn't speak English though. And I was like, can we make friends with them? Wow. <laughs> That's right. You know, but and like one had like a pop out that came out the side with like two really nice chairs and a plant. Like if you got money to put a plant on your pop out on, I'm That's like, right. what do you do? You know, it's crazy. But you just see all these things. And I think traveling the world and being uh, in these mm-hmm. uh, different experiences and doing all of this, it really helps put into perspective like, things that you want to do and places you want to go, but also like 
wow, like these people, but you know, most of the people that were on them, it was funny because these, uh, we were waiting for our boat and uh, some of these the, the people came out and got on theirs and they were like, oh, you have a really nice, this is a really nice little boat. Like it was taking them to their yacht, you know? And they're like, yeah. oh yeah, it's for sale. It's like, uh, we were joking, how much? And they're like, 375,000. They're like, all right, cool. <laughs> that's That's nice. <laughs> <laughs> you know, I was like, wow, it's like the small boat. And then we went back to our boat and then we see it like parked in the side of the yacht. And I'm like, what? I mean, what do they do? Yeah. <laughs> you know, but it's so, it's always like these goals of like, uh, sky's the limit. We can do whatever we want, right? That's right. So, but my goal is to have fun, have experiences, but no debt. So I don't do anything that might put me into debt, but like experiencing the world is definitely my my lifestyle of choice. I'm like very minimalist, but these goals that I have for the future are all kind of circled around that. That's awesome. Yeah. That's awesome. So um, visions uh, for the company besides locations and things like that. So obviously you went from, um, and correct me if I'm wrong, but the spa was, you were the salon first. Salon first. Added, uh, the spa was the addition. And we added the spa. Yeah. So okay. I like mainly have just been hair the whole time. So the spa is new to me. So I have spent hours on top of hours on top of hours on top of work um, researching, learning, you know, because when you're the owner of something, you have to know the ins and outs of, of every aspect of your business. Even though I'm not an esthetician, um, I still need anybody like I had an interview. How do you know if they do a good job? I know. I'm like, really? But honestly, how do you know if they do a good mm-hmm. job? So I bring in someone uh, like Lauren here and we um, and she helps me build. You know what I mean? Try. Like uh, someone that you can, I think having partnerships and mm. uh, people that you can work together with, that's, that's really the biggest secret behind being successful. Is Collaboration. We cannot be, uh, number one, uh, doing everything, we can be, you that's know, right. a group and working together. So, yeah, that's really uh, learning my craft, but also learning every aspect of my business, just like we were talking earlier about, like, you don't ask someone to do something you wouldn't do yourself. But in this case, you know, I'm not licensed to do the esthetic- mm. esthetician stuff. So, but I got to know exactly what that looks like so I can make good decisions on hiring and that's right. all of that. So, mm. yeah. <laughs> Fantastic. Well, um, I have to thank the amazing Miss Emily. She is amazing. <laughs> Absolutely. So do you want to give her a little, we like to plug her on when, so we've had a bunch of guests that have come through that are clients of hers. Yeah. We appreciate her and her PR firm so much. Yes. She's um, awesome. Yeah. So give her a little shout out real quick. And first of all, and how'd you get to know her? Okay. So when we started working uh, with the spa and adding the spa, um, I was working with, um, uh, uh, a guy that was helping me sort of build the spa, right? Mm-hmm. The, which products to use, which devices to bring in. And he was like, you need a PR company. And I was like, really? I need a PR company? And he's like, yes. And I was like, okay. So um, we sought out Emily and interviewed her. She was fabulous. Um, she really helped me understand this world of PR because I had no idea. I'm like, I got an Instagram and <laughs> you know, like I'm, right. I'm like, okay, well, I don't know anything about PR. So she did a fabulous job of helping us kind of um, grow these last few months. And she's, yeah, she's definitely amazing. I can highly recommend her for sure. 100%. And uh, we're talking about the great Emily Berg. She's a previous uh, guest on the show and, um, and uh, her company's RPR firm. Right. And yeah. um, just a, she does great. Her client list is quite impressive. Yes, I'm looking is. at a pre- impressive <laughs> one right now. Um, but uh, we're always grateful for, for her and like to give her a shout out. Yeah, absolutely. No, she's she's fabulous. And she's helped us, like I said, do so many things that I would have never thought of, like a podcast. Like, mm. I mean, like, uh, listen to them. You but... need a podcast. Yeah. <laughs> like, for real. I can't tell you how big of an impact this podcast has made on my business career. Really? Like, well, yeah. so when you just look at the amazing names, yeah. first of all, I, what? give me one reason outside of this that I have to work with you. Oh. That's like, right. <laughs> like, like, oh. The, the collaboration's so yeah. hard. Like, yeah. just, you know what I mean? So um, my buddy, um, my buddy Marcus Whitney that owns the, is a minority owner of the soccer club. Like, we're friends, but like, our work hasn't overlapped in too many ways, right? Yeah. So until I had a podcast, yeah, 
you know, it's, and then I had a great reason to call him. It's it's honestly so cool. Like what you do, you get to talk with all these amazing people and 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 just like ask them about their lives and and I feel like from every time you sit down with someone, you probably what take something away, learn something, and so do they. You know what I Absolutely. mean? Absolutely. And so I think the community of that is really cool. And Nashville at best, like Nashville is amazing for community absolutely and like so i think it's the perfect place to be and mm. but you're right like what how else would i have been here without without her that's and right. then you having a podcast that's right so it's a it's amazing situation that's right well it's i, can, I again i can't tell you the the benefits in, in business and this is i mean we're, and we're still in our first full year of shooting these yeah. so like it's the growth's been crazy the amount of people that we reach every month but like I, i'm once you get to a certain spot in your career like I think everybody needs one. Oh yeah. Um, like I'm a big, big advocate of those. I always tell people, I'm like, if these, if, if I had cameras in this salon, like the stuff that happens and the conversations are hilarious. Absolutely. Like everybody's always like, I don't know how you don't have somebody following you around with like a YouTube channel. And I was like, cause it's confidential. <laughs> <laughs> That's right. <laughs> That's right. Well, dude, it's um, and and you'd be it would it would be awesome. There's no telling, um, the contacts you have, the people that would come on and do those things. Oh yeah. Um, you know, like when 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 this airs, your audience is my audience for a day, right? Too. So there's That's a lot of collaboration cool. there from a yeah. networking perspective. Um, it it really is, and it will live on the internet forever. So like you're forever connected with those folks. It's That's, it's awesome. It's fantastic. I absolutely love it. And and on the flip side. Me being, um, I'm always wanting to grow and get better. I've like a lot of the people I've had have been people that I look up to, yeah, on these shows, right? So, and I literally get to pick their brain and, and talk to them for like an hour, yeah, which is cool. Oh right. my gosh, so I'm at, a lot of the stuff I'm asking is like, well, I need to know this about why they became successful <laughs> so I can learn and use it, yeah, exactly. Yeah, there's there, I have quite a few people on a list, and I like it's so funny because when I have people come and sit in my chair, I do the same thing with them, just that's right, it's not a podcast, you just need to light, light it up like, and lights, camera, action, yeah, it's like, so how did did you do that and what did you do and like I ask questions just like you know like you do and it's that's right and that's how you learn that's how like you have these really cool experiences with people that's right well and that's the best content too isn't it so I mean the content you are the content right <laughs> so that's the biggest thing is just like just uh, just turn the camera on let's go yeah get people in the door have them sit down that's right <laughs> that's right well that's fantastic so anything else that um, that you any other news or anything else you want to uh, let everybody know about before we wrap uh, no, I just, um, I guess biggest thing is, you know, we hope to see some people in it catch and follow us and uh, we'd love to see you in for hair or skin or whatever your needs might be. I promise it'll be um, an amazing experience. Most people make decisions about that stuff. I was one of those that did for a long time until, and it was, my wife was like, dude, just like, will you just hear them out? <laughs> like, will you just do your research? Yeah. Like before you make a decision, you're making a decision based on zero knowledge, yeah. zero facts, zero anything, just because it's not cool for a guy to do that. <laughs> right? So um, like the consult, the consults and stuff, I put it to you this way. I haven't, once I've, when she finally got in front of somebody that said, Hey, talk to Nick about this. I'm a client of every one of them. Yeah. <laughs> A hundred percent. Okay. And, and like all the, the stuff that I do anti-aging, I yep. do, you know, I'm 42. I got a one year old daughter, so she ain't gonna have an old gray headed daddy. Yeah, no, that's, yeah, um, no, I get that. She I is not. That. And, and, uh, 40 the new or 60 the new 40 or whatever they say. Right. That's so right. Like, dude, you gotta take some pride in yourself. You're only as old as you feel or as young as you feel or whatever that thing is. But, that's right. So now you need to come into catch and get an amazing facial. I do need to get from a facial. Lauren. She would be, it's funny we had a client of mine that's been client for years came in yesterday or the day before and I was like will you just she's so stressed out so like crazy and I'm like will you just go back there and let her like give you a facial and relax and she's like you know I can't relax she comes out and I'm, she was like I well, I don't even know. What, I was like, exactly. Mm -hmm. <laughs> this is what you needed. You, you just trust me. I'm That's like, right. And she did. And she's like, sends me a, a, a message later in the evening. And she's like, you are amazing. She's amazing. Catch is amazing. And I'm like, yes. That's right. <laughs> you know. <laughs> That's right. Well, uh, catchnashville.com is the website. Catch Nash, all of your socials. Yep. Right. Um, or is it catch.nash? Catch.nash. Catch.nash. Mm -hmm. I'll well, make sure I get that right. So, yep. and then, um, and then your personal one is again. Um, so I have like uh, Andrea.harbison.hair for hair. And yeah. There so you go. You can follow my, my, uh, my travel 
not I don't really have a travel blog, but I only post travel pictures on Andrea underscore Harbison. <laughs> there you go. Well, yeah. I know that, um, and obviously all these will be um, are on the description of the episode yeah. as well. Um, but uh, man, like you're a freaking badass. Dude. <laughs> Just, and just I'm here and I'm just going there, you know. <laughs> but at 33, like you're not even, you're just getting started. That's right. Oh my gosh! Like I might have a yacht with a pop out one day. That's no. right. At, <laughs> hey man, at 32, 33 was the lowest point in my life. I had lost everything at that time, you know. So like I'm. So many you, people have told me the same thing. Same thing. Yeah. I'm on the 40 year plan. You make all your mistakes early um, in your 20s. <laughs> yeah. Right. Um, you uh, break even in your 30s. You because you then scale you in your 40s. Your and then you crush it in the fifties. Yeah, right? that's my that's my. Plan. And then you retire. <laughs> that's right. That's right. Well, um, Andrea, thank you so much once again, folks. Andrea Harbison, um, celebrity stylist and owner of Catch Salon and Spa in Spring Hill, and futures to come. Right. Yes, so that's for fantastic. Sure. Well, thank you so much for having thank me you today. So much for having me. This is amazing. I had a great time. Folks, thanks so much for tuning in to another episode of the Hit Streak. I'm your man, Nick Heider. God bless. 